In this anatomy video, I want to take you through the three muscles that attach onto the coracoid process. And we're going to talk about why this is important. What are some of the antagonist muscles that sort of resist the movement of these muscles too? So here on the Essential Anatomy app, you can see that I'm drilling in on the left shoulder and I have the scapula highlighted there. This right here is the acromion process, so where the cursor is at. And then here is the coracoid process. So for simplicity's sake, I'm going to hide the pec major muscle. And then that really reveals the three muscles that attach onto the coracoid. First muscle here is going to be our pec minor. Pec minor goes to ribs three, four, and five. It has attachment on the medial aspect of the coracoid. The other two muscles, do you have any guesses what they are? Well, one of them is going to be the short head of the biceps um, right there. As we drill out on that, you can see that that's the medial attachment of the bicep. And then we also have the coracobrachialis muscle. Both of those are flexors of the elbow and shoulder. The pec muscle is a, the pec muscle will help with um, adduction and some primarily adduction of the shoulder. But it also, if these muscles are tight, so as we get in there, you can see how their attachments, because they attach on the coracoid process, they're gonna draw the shoulder forward this way. Or another way of thinking about it is if the arm is extending out, if there's tightness here, as you take up that tension, it'll pull the shoulder that way too. So a big take home point for me when I'm working with people is it's okay that the gravity pulls you into these positions all day, but then the antagonist muscles, the muscles on the back side of the shoulder blade and the scapula, they need to help counterbalance any sort of tightness that might be present here, um, for you, primarily due to postural reasons. So what are those muscles on the backside? We just said the pec minor, the short head of the biceps, and the coracobrachialis, those can often be contributing to a pull forward or an anterior tilt of the scapula. So we need to think about what our posterior tilters are and what muscles help draw the shoulder blades back. If we look at the backside, muscles that connect onto the scapula and help direct that posterior tilt, well, one of them is going to be the lat muscle. So the cue for people is if we can get people to draw their shoulder blades down, which is somewhat of a lat cue, that drawing down action pulls the shoulder blade back, it opens up the position in the front, and that helps guide the shoulder blade position in a more neutral angle. So the lat is very important. I'm gonna hide the lat muscle here now, because we need to get a little bit deeper. The next muscle here is our serratus anterior. So the serratus anterior really helps posteriorly tilt and resist the pull of these anterior structures such as the pec minor. Um, additionally, so we've talked about the latissimus dorsi, the serratus anterior, and then we have muscles like our teres. So teres major, teres minor, all of those will help with, let's say if the shoulder blades are getting drawn forward here, those muscles pull the shoulder blade back. The rhomboid can help with that, but the rhomboid retracts a lot. The teres muscles help draw them back and keep the scapula flush along the back side of the body. And these things work synergistically. So the teres and the, the teres major is often called the lat's little brother because the teres and the lat have a very similar function. Um, that works with the serratus anterior and with the trapezius muscle to pull it back into a posterior tilt and help with the natural upward rotation that needs to occur in the scapula. <clears throat> so the way that I think about all of these things in the body is that there's always a agonist antagonist relationship um, that, and these muscles need to work in synergy. So when you look at the front side of the shoulder and the three muscles that attach onto the coracoid, it's okay that gravity and everything's pulling them forward, but you, we need to know that the backside muscles, the ones that are the counterbalancing force to help provide balance and symmetry in the shoulder, all of those are very important. So our lat, our serratus anterior, teres muscles, even the triceps will help draw the shoulders back. From a functional practical training standpoint, what I would say is, guide movement from the middle back. So strong core position, core draws in, upper back lift. So a lift through the chest, not just locking out the low back, but a lift through the chest, which will pull the shoulder blades back. Then as you're doing 
uh, back strengthening work or even chest type of stuff, you're doing it from a strong position and not starting those movements from here. Or if you're doing bicep curls, not starting your bicep curls there, start them in a really strong upright position because then you're going to be working that muscle from origin into it to insertion and it's full range of motion, not compromising the starting position. So that's where that postural piece is important. And think about leading it uh, from the middle back because that's gonna put those muscles in a strong start position. So this video, it just overviews the three muscles that attach onto the coracoid process and then the antagonist counterbalancing muscles that help support that.